over an important update on the arginine article. Uh, it's super late. Uh, wish I was not still working on this. Um, but uh, Avi Bittman brought it to my attention on Twitter. And, you know, someone told me earlier today, I was, I'm, I'm in an echo chamber of conspiracy theories. And uh, I pointed out that actually I follow a lot of people that totally disagree with me, especially on all the vaccine and COVID stuff. And Avi is one of them. And when Avi criticized the statistics that I was, uh, you know, the conclusions I was making from the statistics in the article, first thing that I did was clarify it with him and actually make some revisions to the article. So um, in the original article on arginine, and these are revisions that I made hours after publishing the article, um, I've gone, gone over this study a number of times and um, just neglected neglected to uh, do a statistical analysis that they didn't do in the paper. And the way that they had worded some stuff kind of just made that thing go a little over my head. And I just, it was just an error on my part. So, okay. So the thing, the, uh, the clear thing that is totally unchanged by anything is that the arginine produced a 6.6 fold increase in the likelihood of improving respiratory function and going down from invasive ventilation to less invasive oxygen support or going off oxygen support by day 10. Um, so that's a dr absolutely dramatic increase in the uh, quickness with which you can improve respiratory function that would, uh, you know, that would presumably be life-saving. I mean, you know, you expect if someone is far more quickly and far, you know, getting off oxygen support, they don't need it anymore, that they're going to be less likely to die. Um, however, because, and keep in mind, these are the interim results, right? So what we're ultimately expecting is 290 patients flowing through this, which should give us 145 uh, patients in each group rather than the 45 that we have now, because it was 53 in the placebo and 48 in the uh, arginine group. But then some people died like before they got any treatments. Um, and so the people left over were 45 in each group. And three people died in the uh, placebo group and zero people died in the arginine group, which is 6.7% versus 0%. The problem is that they report statistical significance in the paper for the other analysis that includes the people who died before they got treatment. And that's, you know, in, uh, in these trials, they'll do per protocol analysis and intention to treat analysis. In, intention to treat analysis is, you know, we randomized these people. This is what they were supposed to get. Um, and that's how we're going to analyze it. Per protocol analysis is, well, these people dropped out. These people died before it was relevant. These people, you know, withdrew consent. So they're excluded. And we're just going to look at who completed the full protocol to the end. Um, so in the per protocol analysis, in this particular case, I think sometimes the, a lot of times what they'll say in, in like a statistics book or, um, you know, a review on how to do, uh, how to properly and do meta-analyses and stuff like that, they'll generally prioritize the intention to treat analysis, which includes the people that didn't follow the protocol from beginning to end. And the rationale is that those are the people you randomized. And so if you have a bunch of people drop out in one group and not the other, um, and you look at who adhered to the protocol, then you're not looking at the randomized, you're no longer doing a randomized control trial. Generally, I personally favor giving priority to the intention to treat analysis, which was statistically significant here. However, after reading over and over and over again, who died where and what, um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't use the intention to treat analysis here because, um, all the people who died outside of those three and zero, all the other people who died, died not because they dropped out of the trial or anything like that, but because they literally died before they gave them the treatment. And so they basically just don't matter. Like those, it doesn't make sense to count those people. And so if you use the per protocol analysis, um, 
then it's three people died in the arginine group and zero died in the placebo, excuse me, three people died in the placebo group and zero died in the arginine group. And the p-value is, is 0.19. And so that means that if arginine is not reducing mortality, we would have a 19% chance of having observed something like that. It's still far more likely on a four to one basis that uh, that arginine is reducing mortality. Um, but we'll have good statistics when the trial is complete, because remember, we're going to have 290 people in this trial when it's done. So we should be able to, uh, if arginine reduces mortality, we should see statistical significance when those are done. So I've, um, I changed the title from, I mean, cure is, it's not, as I stated in the original ar article, I, I took a little bit of poetic license with that anyway. Um, and I liked the alliteration, uh, but I changed it to could cure instead of cured. Um, but you know, the, the main thing is the 6.6 fold, uh, the 6.6 fold increase in the likelihood of achieving respiratory improvement by day 10. And I would say that arginine may have abolished the risk of death. It appears to be life-saving. Um, but in order to see the mortality benefit, we need to wait till the full 290 particip participants go through uh, to achieve statistical significance. So I have, um, I've just modified the language in the article to be, um, to be more acknowledging of the uncertainty around the mortality benefit and to be more emphatic around the primary results being the improvement in respiratory function. Um, because the, the results in the improvement in respiratory function are still quite phenomenal. Um, and so I think this study is, I think it's, it's, I think it's very remarkable, um, that, you know, when they had randomized a third of the people, they were able to find such strong results on the respiratory improvement. And so hopefully that means that when the full people go through, we'll see that strength that, that will, we'll see it equally as remarkable, um, the mortality benefit that comes from that. Uh, so I think it's extremely promising from a mortality benefit, uh, state uh, standpoint, but I, uh, overstated the degree to which what I had originally said was arginine abolished the risk of death in this trial. And we would need to see the full results and larger studies to make a general statement about whether arginine abolishes or dramatically reduces or whatever the risk of death. I have now modified it to not say that arginine abolished the risk of death in this trial, but rather that arginine may have abolished the risk of death in this trial, but we need the trial to complete with the 290 participants to see rigorous statistical evidence of that. Um, so looks like there's uh, two questions in chat. Luke says, how much ar arginine? It's just re read the article. It's linked in the top of the description, but it's 3.2 grams, uh, 1.6 grams, two times per day. Um, Freedom Fox one. Yes, I absolutely address citrulline. Um, before over uh, repeatedly, but in, and in the article, I address cit citrulline and the uh, gist of it is that citrulline usually is very well converted to arginine, but it might not be in this case because COVID appears to be altering the arginine metabolism. Um, so anyway, I think the evidence is very strong in favor of arginine here. It's just that we don't have rigorous statistical evidence on the mortality benefit. Um, and so it's super important to me that uh, I don't overstate the case on anything, especially since the implications of this stuff are getting so controversial. Um, and um, you know, I did I did overstate the case on the mortality benefit uh, on the confidence we can have in the mortality benefit in the original article and video. Um, and so I've left comments and pin them wherever I could on how I revised that. Um, but anyway, so the final con conclusion is largely intact. And that is um, 3.2 grams of arginine uh, spread across two, 
two divided doses per day in patients that already have severe COVID cases, respiratory distress, and low lymphocyte counts leads to an almost sevenfold increase in the likelihood of achieving improvement in respiratory function by day 10, um, which we would expect to have a mortality benefit. And no one died in the arginine group, whereas three di people died in the placebo group, which looks on the surface like an abolition of the risk of death, um, but has a p-value of 0 0.19. And so therefore, we want to wait to the for the, um, we can conclude now that there's a dramatic hastening of respiratory improvement. And given the risk uh, of arginine is basically zero if you don't have a herpes infection and is having a flare up if you do, um, then, you know, noting that risk um, when it seems needed, this dose of arginine seems like it has a dramatic improvement in respiratory function, probably has a dramatic improvement in mortality, and we'll find out when the study's published. So that's the update.